Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Jesus presents a revision of the previous day, filmed on the 29th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. So, so what we'll do first is uh, have a bit of a revision. You remember back to the starting talk yesterday morning, which was the desire for personal truth? That was the one that I gave, so... Desire for personal change, honey. For personal change, sorry. There were three things... That, this was all about measuring where you're at right now without judgement, remember? All right. Yeah, and you all struggled with that. You all flick into judgment straight away. You all go into fear straight away. This is not good because it means that you can't progress if you do that. So, so what were the three ways of measuring? Measuring the... Can you remember? And if we go Peter and then back to Sue and then over to Nat, over this side. Uh, yeah, it's Peter. And how you use your time? So how I use my time, number one, time, how you use it. Very important. What does it show? It proves whether you really have an intention to do something or not, doesn't it? Right? And the majority of us use our time based around the fear-based activities, really. And this is an indication that something's got to change if we're ever going to make any growth. So Sue was the next one, baby. And then, and then we're, well, Nat's, in, uh, uh, Nat's over there, so if I just wait for Corny to get you. Um, how do I use my will? How do we use our will? So do we use our will to love? Or what else do we do with it? We're going to talk a bit more about that this morning. So how we use our will. And the third thing was, can you remember, Sue? Or is we, we've gone too far ahead already. <laughs> too far ahead, no worries. Wait, can you remember the third thing? Thanks, Emma, down. Do we still need to say our name? Sorry? Do we yeah, still, yeah, yeah still say your name. Um, the third thing is... How much resistance do I have to truth? Resistance to truth, yeah. So, so it's not about the truth itself, but rather your resistance to it. And you can measure these things really easily. You can measure the resistance to truth that you have really easily just by feeling your feelings. Anytime somebody tells you some truth, you know straight away, oh, here I am again. <laughs> there it is, you know, I'm shutting down again. I'm trying to block it off again. I'm trying to weasel my way out of it, as the saying goes, you know, minimise, justify, shift the blame, squirm and wriggle out of the whole situation. You know, we like slippery eels when it comes to truth. All right? Now, a person who, who wants a relationship with God is not like that. A person who wants a relationship with God loves the truth every time. A right? person who wants a relationship with God loves to use their will in harmony with love. That's, and that's all they're focused on every day. They don't, they don't go, oh, that person hurt me, this person hurt me, so I'm not going to use my will to love them. They, they see those persons that, are, that have hurt them as opportunities to love. That's what they see it as. Completely the opposite way that most of us look at things. And how we use our time, let's be honest about how we use our time because that is a very good indicator of how much desire there is in us to change. Right? That's, that's the very important things to bear in mind. Then uh, the next talk, you remember it was Corny's talk that Corny gave to you. Do you remember the subject matter? What was the theme of his talk? Can you remember that? So, Jan, and then, yep. Fear, uh, Jane, fear, fear of change. Fear of change. So, very good. And remember how he got you thinking about the, the T-junction. Like, what do you do when you're faced with decision time? So, remember, he drew the T-junction. I'll draw a simple one. He had a road that you could actually walk on. But uh, there was the point of decision. And he was focused on that point of decision. What decision are you making there? And remember, he said this direction was fear and this direction was in harmony with truth. Which one do you normally take? All right. And if most of us are honest, we take this one. Almost every time. And, and particularly under pressure. That, that's the road we take under pressure. 
So a bit of pressure comes on us, bang, we're down that road in a, in a heartbeat, basically. Okay. Now, he presented to... Uh, remember, he, he was trying to get you to connect with some of the fears that you have initially, and you listed quite a long list of fears that you had about why you're afraid of changing and all those kind of things, and then he said, sorry, but all of that's just pretty much rubbish. Right? And then he said there was three main reasons why we don't change. Three main reasons only. Can you remember what they were? If, if we come, is it Lee? Le, 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 Lila. Is that right? Lana. Lana. Sorry. Lani? Lani. Sorry. Um, lack of faith. So the first one was lack of faith. Yep. And remember there was mo a lack of faith in, in a number of things. Like... The first thing, and most importantly, there's a lack of faith in God. God. Right now, a lack of faith in God is critical. Is one of the critical reasons why we refuse to change. We don't believe God is good. We don't believe what God made is good. We don't believe that everything, if we if we engage all of God's laws, we will be supported. We don't believe those things. We just don't. And that's the reason why whenever we've, whenever we've come to this decision point where we either choose truth or, and love or we choose fear, we, we go down to fear road right? because fear meets our addictions and, we, and also meets our belief systems. This is a problem that we have, right? Okay, what's the other thing we have lack faith in? If we, Carol, up the back there. Overwhelm, not wanting to feel. Well, before then even. Oh. There's a lack of faith that we have some a lack of faith in something else. Ourselves. Ourselves. Yeah. Ourselves. Can you see that actually if you had faith in God, you would probably automatically have some faith in yourself? Can you see that? God made you, so it would make sense that God made you to feel everything you need to feel. It would make sense that God made you to live in harmony with the laws of the universe. It would make all of these things would make sense, right? So we're not using any logic in this place even when we have no faith in ourselves, when we have no faith in choosing to do things even if there's a potential of mistake. This is one of your major blockages as a group. You're so afraid of making mistakes. right? And so what do you do? You do nothing. <laughs> well, that's a mistake. In fact, that's one of the biggest mistakes you could make. And yet you don't view it as a mistake. You view it as, ah, oh, you know, that's too hard, that's too hard, so I'm just going to sit here and not go any direction and say, and then, and then say, at least I'm not making a mistake. Yes, you are. You're making the mistake to not use your will in any direction. That's the mistake. Your will is not going to develop that way. Okay. So then, as Kel brought up, there was the, over, the fear of being overwhelmed emotionally, isn't there? So I'll just put it as overwhelmed emotionally. This is a major problem. It's a major problem. It, sh it demonstrates a lack of faith in God and ourselves for a start. Because every time you get to, uh, to be emotionally overwhelmed, you forget God made you this way. God made you to feel emotions. God made you to have these emotional experiences and God made you to grow through these emotional experiences and so therefore be stretched emotionally. God made you that way. And there we're trying as hard as we can to prevent the overwhelm emotionally. We're working directly in disharmony with the way God made us. Now do you think you're ever going to get closer to God by working in direct disharmony, direct opposite direction, than God made you to act or be? Of course not. So that's going to be an issue. And do you remember what the third one was? That Corny mentioned. Um, Julia, back to things. Uh, yes, um, it's Julie. Resistance to God's truth. So resistance to God's truth, right? So this is very important. Resist. So resistance to God's truth. Well, why is that a problem? <laughs> it's pretty, pretty obvious probably why, isn't it? Right. 
If we're going to change, we're going to need to bring our entire life into harmony with the laws of the universe, and the laws of the universe are God's truth. So, so if we're resisting God's truth, we're automatically creating pain in our life, automatically. Every time we do it, we're automatically creating more pain. See, for the majority of us, we think, I resist God's truth, I fit into the world better. No, you don't. You, you don't fit into the world better because all of the world is controlled by God's laws in the end. You're actually going to fit into the world worse. That's why you have more pain. But there's all this internal justification going on and this is why these are the main reasons why we don't progress. Because we're unwilling to feel the emotions associated with these feelings. And you're not going to be able to get through that intellectually. You're not. Many of you have tried and haven't been successful because you're unwilling to feel some of the emotions. Some of the emotions here are really deep despair here in this area here. Deep despair about, oh, I'm not going to cope, I'm going to go nuts, I'm going to go crazy, it's going to be terrible, or, or God's a terrible person, why did God make all of these things? Why did, why did God make it so hard? And why did, you know, all these emotions that are in you prevent you from having a faith in God. If you have no faith in God, then what's going to happen? You're not going to want to change. So when it comes to this decision point that Corny brought up in his talk, you're always going to make a decision to go down the wrong direction, and that's going to be a problem. All right, so this is an issue. Thanks. No? I'm Lani. Uh, it's like exact opposite to everything that I've believed in in my life. Correct. Before? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We've been taught to rely on ourselves, not on God, but even relying on ourselves, we don't even trust our emotions. We, we, don't, we don't even go there. And then when it comes to being overwhelmed emotionally, what, what does the world believe with that? If someone's overwhelmed emotionally, what do you do with them? You put them in an asylum or you, 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 you drug them to the hilt if you can. That's what you do. You don't actually allow them to go through the emotion in some kind of manner that's manageable. And when it comes to resistance to God's truth, man, we're just resistive to truth, let alone God's. You know? <laughs> like, that's the way it is. Honey. Um, it's kind of like going really through it, like that shaky period where you're letting go of the, all the old and then to really, like with whole faith, take on the new way. Correct. And that's... Yeah. And this is a switch that has to happen emotionally. Yeah. It's not going to happen through your intellect. Uh, so it's going to have to happen by you releasing some of your beliefs about these things. And I've realised last night that I had a belief that I couldn't change. Yep, most people do. Mm. In, fact, in fact, almost every television show you see, almost every series that you might watch on a television show or a radio show or any of those kind of things, what do they basically demonstrate with the characters? that they basically are intrinsically flawed and they never, never change. Like, it's very rare to see a show that actually portrays somebody as actually changing. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's a very common belief. Yeah. So this is completely, like, it sort of blows everything out of the water. And yeah. 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 What, Corny's talk we're going to refer to quite frequently over the coming days because many, many of us think we're beyond that place. And this is a big problem that we have. We're not beyond that place. That's why we're not progressing. Because we don't even have faith that we can progress. We don't have faith in God that God's made it easy to progress, actually. It's easier to progress than it is to stay still, to be honest. Uh, and most of us don't believe that. Most of us believe that it's easier to stay still than progress. Right? God, God made a universe that's always changing and all of God's laws are focused on making the universe change, including making your soul change. All of God's laws are all focused to making it easier for you if you decide to change. Uh, and then we're desperately holding on. Desper it takes a lot of effort to desperately hold on to things. This is why many of you are feeling exhausted because you're desperately holding on to past beliefs, past ideas, past concepts, emotions. That are, these are all driven by emotions that you're unwilling to release. And of course, that means that there's no progress. But, it's a, but to be frank, it's the most exhausting process if you do that. 
That's, when, that's the time of the most exhaustion, when you try to desperately hold on to the old while you're trying to do something new. You've got to learn to give things up. And that means sometimes giving up all sorts of things, relationships, friendships, all sorts of things that you're trying to hold on to desperately. Right? A person who loves lets the unloving past go. You understand what I mean by that? You let it go. You don't hold on to it and desperately try to drag it into your future. You can't do that. It's unloving. It's got to go if you ever want to get close to God. And most of us are so terrified of that, that it, of, of whatever we have right now going, we, we can't embrace something that's better. And this is our problem, is we're desperately holding on to the status quo, you know, something that's like normal, average, what everybody else has, and, and we're not letting it go, and then we're wondering why we're not happy. Because you, you're desperately trying to hold on to something that has to go before you can change. And this is the reasons why. These are the reasons why. And then Mary came up yesterday and she talked to you about what subject? Can you remember her talk? What was the subject of her talk? Yeah. It was a th the theme of her talk. If we come down, down to Glenda. Engaging our will to love. Yeah, so she actually used the term strengthening your will to love. Do you remember that? So, yep. Oops. And she refocused on a number of things. The first thing was what? Do you remember her introduction? She tried to focus you, if we come down to Nick, down here. Just leave your hand up, because I still. So. Uh, Nick, um, uh, differentiating a will and willpower. No, before then she mentioned something else. Something that's really important, actually. This is, that's good, but we need to, if we come down to Dan, Daniel. <laughs> Um, Daniel, I think it's about we don't actually know what love is and we were never taught. Yes, but even before then, there was something that was a really key point that we're going to emphasise to the entire week. If we go back to Bruce. Uh, your will can be used in or out of harmony with love. Very true, but uh, there was something that Mary mentioned in amongst that. Yeah. Again, really key point. If we go Catherine, thanks. Will happens without effort. That is very true, but it's before then that this thing is I'm looking for. It's very interesting. If we go, if we come down to, uh, actually, let's go Hiroko. Let's go across to Hiroko. Hiroko, um, she said um, people use their free will to hurt us, but we can make our decisions and use our will to love. We can, but that's and not what I'm getting at. Oh. Okay, so let's come across, come across to Karina. We first need to let go of our arrogant belief that we know what love is and what love would do. We do, but it's before that. Can I stop all this? <laughs> it's a very key point. You don't have an education in love. You don't have an education in love. You've never been educated in love. No one's ever taught you. Your family never taught you. Your friends never taught you. The education system never taught you. you when you went to preschool, nobody showed you. When you went to high, you know, primary school, nobody showed you. In Australia, it's high school, nobody showed you. When you went to college or university, nobody showed you. All of your education you've had has been about something else. Nobody showed you how to have a relationship. Nobody showed you how to be loving to your children. Nobody showed you any of these things. Like, like, of all the education that you could give a person in terms of aiding their happiness, isn't an education in love the most important thing? Right? So this is very key part of this subject, right? And this is where 
this is what most of most of us don't realize is that we are so we have so much deficit when it comes to understanding love that we believe what we are doing is loving when it's completely out of harmony with love completely yeah now once we get to that point where where everything we're doing is completely out of harmony with love and we haven't had an education we need to stop judging ourselves that we didn't have an education because the whole world is not educating anybody about love, right? We need to stop judging ourselves about it, but we need to start focusing our will on doing it for ourselves. This is where we need to go. Educating ourselves in love. And, you know, some of the questions you guys ask me, like, you know, why have I got pain in my body? Or, well, it's all about love. Why have, why have I got putting on weight? Well, that's all about love. Why am I, you know, having problems in my relationships with my parents, children, partner, whatever? That's all about love. Every single problem you've listed on all of the feedback sheets is all about love. Every single one of them. They all demonstrate we are uneducated in love. Very important thing to remember. We're going to hopefully give you a bit more education in love this week. That's, that's our desire, right? The whole point of today, tomorrow, next day is all about re-educating you so you start understanding love. Right? So don't stop judging yourself and going, oh, just nobody taught me and then blaming them that they didn't teach you. How could they teach you? They weren't taught either. So let's just give up all this blaming of the past, whoever brought us up or whatever else, and focus on the fact that we need to be personally responsible for our education in love. We do. Right. So that's the first part. So that was, we are uneducated in love, in the subject of love. That's, that's, now, Mary spent nearly 10 minutes discussing that with you. It's interesting how many persons I had to ask before we got to that, and we didn't really even get to that. I'm sure some of you would have known if we got there eventually. But it's a very important part of that discussion. Right? Then, as Nick brought up, was the discussion of what is will right, versus what is will power. And what did you learn there? What did you learn in that discussion? Okay, if we go up here and down front to Phoebe. Well, to be frank, I'm, I'm still confused about the difference. Who else is confused? No one? Okay. Just you, Pierre. <laughs> oh, I feel everyone's confused, to be honest, but, but anyway, they think they're not. Well, can I give an example? Um, give an example. Why, why I'm confused about... Well, this is the key thing that Mary said there. Your will comes from the operation of your soul. Your willpower is used to avoid your soul. Avoid your soul emotions. Now, let's give you an example. It's really simple, some simple examples. Many of you, like, yes, last, like last night, I, suggest, I talked to you about the plastic being left all over the table. You know what a person in willpower would do? They would go, okay, next time I'm going to notice those kind of things and I'm going to purposefully do it, do the loving thing that I notice, right? Now that's using your willpower, because it's not addressing what in your soul caused you to ignore the issue in the first place. Once you get rid of what's in your soul to ignore the issue, and once you get rid of what's in your soul in terms of emotionally, you will automatically do what your will determines, and your will will determine something that's in harmony with love. With willpower, we're trying to avoid the condition of our soul. We're trying to skip over it. We're trying to say to ourselves, I'm really developed when really we're not. That's what we're trying to do. And this is something that most of you have been doing. You've been using your willpower to power you through the divine love path, as many of you have been calling it, you know, the DLP, many of you have given it the acronym, I don't call it that, it's the way that God made for me to progress towards God. And you think that using willpower is the way to get there, and I'm telling you, it's, it's, give that up, because all you're doing is creating another religion when you do that. And this is not about creating another religion, this is about actually connecting to what is really inside of your soul, and that requires a lot of self-honesty and self-analysis. 
much more self-analysis and self-honesty than you've been prepared to engage, to be honest. Right? You need to see what's really in your soul. With willpower, it's about avoiding seeing. You're skipping over it. What you're trying to do is put on a facade. Make out that you've changed when you really haven't. Right? That's what willpower is all about. And many of you have been doing this. When I say many, all of you, there are, almost all of you have been doing that. Some of you, I've noticed you're connecting to your soul, but it's a very rare thing. Right? Rita, you want to ask? Rita, you said to see what's in our soul now. Is it about what's in our soul? What's in our soul right now, or what God has put into our soul from well, God's point of view? No, see, this is to see the purity or to see the damage. For most of you, there's no purity in your soul. That's the reality. But. <laughs> When we focus on the will... No, can we just stop? Because it, you've already said a whole heap of things that show a, l a gross misunderstanding of God's truth. God didn't put anything into your soul. God created your soul with a personality and nature and you put things into your soul or the environment put things into your soul. Let's get it right. right? This is one of the things we'll learn about yourself today, your real self. So let's get it right. God didn't put things into your soul. You do. Now, if you think about all the things that you put into your soul over the last 40, 50, 60, 70 years, it hasn't been too good, right? So how can you expect that, it can, that, it, that you have a nice, pure soul? You can't. Like, the reality is, God, didn't cre cre God created you with the potential to put whatever you want into your soul. But your will has to be engaged. What will go in will depend on your will. And this is something that most of us don't understand at all. We think that God created all these wonderful qualities, right? And let's divorce that from the personality, because we'll talk about the personality today. But we feel God created all these wonderful qualities and attributes, put them in our soul, and we're just ignoring them. No, you've never developed them. Never. You've never had anyone teach you them, and you've never developed them. For, the, for, for most of you, there's no like spark of love in you. None at all. And the reason why is because it's never been developed. No one ever taught you how to develop love, the quality of love. No one ever taught you how to develop the quality of logic. So most of your logic is totally screwed up. You know, you think you're logical. When I look at it, it goes, man, that's the most illogical thing you could do. Like, one of the most illogical things you could do is to not feel. And I see all of you doing that most of the time. And God created your soul to feel. So to me, the most, one of the most illogical things you could choose to do is to not feel. Right? So this is where even our logic is screwed up. Every, everything is screwed up because of the fact that we have not been educated in love. So it's got, it's got to stop blaming ourselves. Right? Although, there are some things that we need to look at ourselves, as you'll see today. Right? Because the reality is we have made choices where we knew when something might have hurt somebody, but we still went ahead and did it. And we've made choices where we knew we were even hurting ourselves half the time, and we still went ahead and did it. So that's using our will out of harmony with love. So God gave you the will, gift of will, which is a soul-based quality, but how you've used it, has been completely out of harmony with love. And most of us have been taught how to make it out of harmony with love right from infancy, right even before we were born, right from the time of conception. Our parents were already doing it, so we naturally learnt their way, right? Yeah. Ilvira, you want to say? Ask? Leave your hand up. Yep. It's a bit hard to see you from the back, so. Elvira? Um, I noticed after the talk yesterday, a lot of people were using willpower to act in love. Correct. I agree. Um, but what, what a pointless thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was I was noticing it, but what I'm wondering and that I'm confused about, yeah, is that like I've used my will in a bad direction a lot. I agree. Yep. But now, 
Like sometimes I can see that how I'm feeling is unloving, yep. but I don't want to do the unloving thing. Yep. So but you do want to do the unloving thing. Can I illustrate how? Yeah. The only way for the unloving thing that's in your soul to get out of your soul is for you to process through it emotionally. Is that not true? It's the only way it's going to come out of your soul. But what do you choose to do? You choose to not process it emotionally most of the time. But the question is like, okay, if I don't want to Uvira, do something... you never heard me there. <laughs> okay. You're not seeing it as a choice. You're not seeing... The choice you're making to not process the thing emotionally means that you're automatically going to have to revert to willpower to do the loving thing. If you release the emotion, you wouldn't have to revert to willpower. It will be automatic a change. But we choose to not release the emotion. That's our choice. That's the unloving choice we're making for whatever faith-based reason, Corny's talk, whatever reason, those three reasons we choose. Remember, it's just three. They're the only reasons why we're choosing to not feel it emotionally. And when we choose to not feel something emotionally, we've made a choice to be unloving automatically. And then, of course, to overcome that so we can put on a facade and make out to everybody that we're still doing all right, what we do is we engage our willpower so that we do the loving thing, but in the end it's not loving. Because the loving thing is to get rid of what's in our soul. That's the loving thing. And we don't see it that way. But like yesterday when you said like about being kind to each other. Yeah. Like there's no... Until I make those choices... Yeah. Is it not better to do the loving thing in the facade or... No, it's I make never... That choice? Like do you think it's good for, from God's perspective that you do a loving thing in a facade? Is it love then? Mm. Love can't do anything in a facade. When are we going to get that? Love is either a real emotion or it's not there. Right? Mm. So let's be honest and say it's not there. Whenever you try to love in a facade, you're not being real and therefore it's not love anyway. So, so, it's, so it's all a waste of time. What you need to do instead is go, I, you need to recognise, I am being unloving right in this situation right now. I need to remove myself from this situation and sort my reason why I am being unloving right now. If we were really loving, that's what we would do. But that's not what most of us do. So if you feel you can't be loving in that moment, yep. you remove yourself. And remove then... yourself and look at the reason why. Feel the reason why. It's only by feeling the reason why that anything will really change. If you stay in a situation and be all facade, that's not love. Stop thinking it's love. It's not. It's not love. It's a facade and it's evil and it's untruthful. It's manipulative. It's controlling. It's, it's a lot of very negative things, but it ain't love. Does that make sense? And we've got to give up this concept that we can fake love until we make love. Like, we've got to give up that concept. We, can, we can't. It either exists in the moment or it does not. And for the majority of us, it does not. And we need to be honest about that and start at that point. Does that make sense? So when you said being kind to each other, it, the kind thing is to remove yourself. Yes, yes. yes. The kind thing is if you feel like, I'm a bit angry now, I'm a bit frustrated now, I want to manipulate this person now, I want to control this person now, the kind thing to do in that situation would be to remove yourself from the person, just say, I'm sorry, I'm being unloving to you. Remove yourself from the situation and go into the reason why you chose that unloving action. That would be the kind thing. But the majority of us don't do that, <laughs> do we? We don't. And we've got to start being honest about the fact that we don't do it. And that means that our will is actually not as nice as what we think. The reality is we have very little will to love. And rather, we have quite a lot of will to attack and punish and denigrate and pull down and humiliate and be condescending and act superior to. And a lot of other things that we have a will being exercised towards. And it's not loving. And you're not going to be able to fake it. And I cannot emphasize to you enough 
It's impossible. Like, stop using the word love along with willpower because they are not, willpower is not loving. It's like, you can't use your willpower to love. It's impossible. Stop using the terms as if you can. Like, stop joining the terms together. Stop thinking that you can act loving without feeling a feeling of love. You can't. Give that up as a concept. You've got to be real about that if you're ever going to progress. Does that make sense? Very important that Mary's talk cover, and Mary's talk covered that, perhaps not quite as, <laughs> as insistently as I just did, but that's the point we're trying to get across to you. You cannot manufacture love. Love is an emotion of your soul that needs to be real. And for most of us, if we're honest, it is not real. So therefore, you're using willpower and it's not love. Anything that's not real is not love. So it's not love, it's just codependent addiction, bartering, showing off, whatever you want to call it. It's not love. We've got to give up the concept that we're being loving through manufacturing a state. Yep. Very important part of this understanding of your will. And then Mary talked to you about how do you develop your will? How do you do that? Remember? You remember Corny was up here doing things? What, what was he doing? Can you remember the first thing he had to do to build a muscle? What was that? For you, Kel, you wanted to say what that was? The first thing he had to do, to yep. lift up the weights. Yeah, yeah. He had to have some <laughs> overwhelming stimuli. Yeah, feel overwhelmed. And remember he said it had to be heavier than what he could handle reasonably like after a few reps, yeah. after a few repetitions, right? Remember that? This is, this is one way you stretch yourself to love. You put yourself in situations where you know you are going to be challenged to love. That's what you do. And then you choose love and see what happens. And then if, if you can't choose love from your soul, you withdraw from the situation and you go, wow, that was a bit intense. Why couldn't I choose love in that situation? You analyse what's, what's gone on. Right? What was the next thing? I've already mentioned it. It's repetition, right? Do it again and again and again. One of the biggest problems that we observe is that people give up so easily. It's like, I'm going to go up and be loving. Oh, I just got attacked for being loving. I'm not being loving anymore. <laughs> like, so, so you just give up. Like, how crazy is that? If you give up after once, nothing is going to change. Like it's pointless. Imagine Corny trying to build some muscles and he just goes, one, puts it down, goes, that was heavy. Not doing that again. You know, you could even take steroids and it wouldn't make any difference because you have to actually do some weight still <laughs> to, to even do that. Right? And this is the thing, we're, we're, we're trying to come up with some magical quick fix solution in a lot of cases with love when all it requires is our persistence to go back into the situation and, and look at the reason inside of us at the soul level as to why we couldn't love there in the first place. This is happening a lot in relationships, right? Okay, you remember the third thing, very important thing. What, was it, what, did, what did you have to do? Can you remember? Yep, if we go to Catherine again, and then maybe down, do you remember the fourth, fourth thing, Pete? Yeah, so we come down to Peter. That's Catherine, good food and plenty of water. Well, I wish she, yeah, she's taken the fourth one. But oh, yes, sorry. you're right, you're right. Don't feel me that. You, you did two in a row, that's great, Catherine. Good food, let's look at the good food issue. You know, the majority of us, we feed ourselves on spiritual crap all day, and then we hope that we're going to have some kind of closer connection with God and ourselves by the end of the day. And when I say spiritual crap, you know, we get, we get on, the, on the internet or Facebook or, you know, have all of these back and forwards with people about whether they're being loving, whether you're being loving. We tell people about all the things we've gone through in the day. We're narcissists. <laughs> Honestly. If you have a daily Facebook interaction, basically you're being a narcissist. 
Because what's the whole point of doing it? It's so that you can share your life with the world. Like it's not good enough for you to actually live in the world. You've got to have another number of people who are not in your life engaged with you as well. Isn't that narcissism? Right? So, so why do we do it? Why do we do it? Because we love feeding on junk food. That's why we do it. And, and you can't grow when you're feeding yourself junk food all the time. You just can't. No, it's impossible. What would be better? Reading a book that actually teaches you something about love. Reading a book that actually teaches you something about self-analysis. Reading a book that actually helps you get to the stage where you can look at yourself clearly in the mirror and see what's wrong. Read a book that teaches you about God. Read a book that teaches you about God's laws. Read a book. <laughs> like, or listen to a movie or engage something that does all of those things. Do you follow me? That would be engaging spiritual food that's actually edifying, building you up, working you through the lack of education. Remember, this is all about re-education. If you were dedicated, this is what we would do. We would re-educate ourselves about love. And the, the food, the, the drink is really important. What was the analogy with drink? Can you remember? If we go to Peter now. Thanks, Peter. Uh, it was truth. It was truth in particular. God's truth. God's truth. Okay. So, so if we think about it, how much of a strong desire do we have for God's truth? Like, do we find ourselves engaging it every day for hours a day, or do we just find ourselves ignoring it? You know, once a week we sit down and go, oh, maybe I better do that, or even less than that. But what do we do? Do we have a, when it's presented to us, do we have a big resistance to it, or do we long for it? What, what do we feel? Most of you feel like whenever we raise some truth with you, personal or God's, oftentimes is oh, I don't want that. Or we, we become like fruit pickers picking, you know, all the stuff that we want and leaving all the stuff behind, all the other stuff behind. Right? I can imagine when I, when I was a kid, I can imagine working on a block, block, fruit block doing that and how long I would have lasted with the owner. You, you know, do you know what I mean? Like when I was a kid, we used to pick fruit all the time. Like from the ta from age of five, I've been picking fruit, right, and for you know to earn income. And uh, and so we would pick fruit. Now, if I went to a block and he said, "Pick all the orange ones, and leave all the green ones," and I went and picked all the green ones and left all the orange ones, uh, I'm sure I would have lasted a long time, right? It's a pretty simple choice to make. Orange, green, orange, green. <laughs> and this is what we're doing, though. You, many of us are picking things that are, green, that are green, bad for us, you know. And the ones that are ripe, the real truth that's ripe, we just skip over that, leave that behind because we don't want that bit. Yeah? It's a problem, isn't it, Lani? Okay. I'm Lani. Um, I'm feeling really confused about what love is, what God's... Oh, that's great. Because uh, uh, you should be confused about what love is. Yeah. I just sort of know the hallmark sort of love. And Do you? Well... Uh, see, I suggest to most of you that most of you only know the hallmarks of codependent addiction, yeah. and that's not love. Yeah. Do you know what I mean by codependent addiction? Well, you, if you don't, you'll learn all about it tomorrow, mm. right, when we have our addiction yeah. day. Yeah, I'm just feeling really floundering at the moment. That's great. That's great. Sit with that. You need to sit with that because the, what we tried to do yesterday is to demonstrate to you none of you have a proper education in love. Right? It's taken us thousands of years to get a proper education in love. Right? And, and then add that to the problem that we have on earth, which is nobody educates you in love right from the time you're born. You're educated in everything else other than love. It's no wonder that we have no understanding of it. So that's okay. We'll, we will, through the process, gain an understanding and knowledge of love as long as we give up certain things. And we do have to give up our past definition of what we believe love to be. What most of you believe love to be at the moment is just codependent addiction being fulfilled. You know, somebody, somebody does something for you or says something to you that makes you feel good about yourself, you think that's love. 
Right? That's not how God is. You know, if that's how God was, you would already be hearing, because God can speak to you, right? If He wanted to, if He wanted to speak to your ear, He made your ear. He could speak to it if He wanted to speak to it. And the fact that He doesn't speak to anybody's ear means He doesn't want to. <laughs> but if He did want to, what would He say? Right? Most of the time, He'd be saying, "You're in codependent addiction. You're in codependent addiction again." There it is again, and there it is again. And you're calling it love, it's not my love. There it is again. You know, you'd be driven batty by God speaking to you if God spoke to you. Right? Because God would have to say every single time that you've had in codependent addiction, you know, here he goes again. But God gave you free will, right? You're allowed to be in codependent addiction if that's what you want. And most of us have chosen that because that is what we have been taught. So yes, uh, it's great that you're confused about what love is. That's the start of some more analysis. <laughs> that makes sense. And more desire for information. And a lot of what, what we'll be looking at this week is about what love is not to help you like, understand some very basic things. Yeah. Because it, it, we need to unlearn all of this bad information that we've imbibed all through our life we do need to unlearn it and when you're unlearning i don't know those of you who went to uni do you remember a time when you first sat down there it was a brand new subject and particularly this happens a lot with engineering subjects right where a person sits down it's a brand new subject and it's like totally confused <laughs> you remember that feeling for those of you who did that like totally like like what's going on here and there's all this internal turmoil, it's hard to understand. Well, you're going to have to go through that with love because at the moment that's where most of us are. We have no understanding about it at all. Yep. And we believe we do. That's our big problem. That's our big problem. Okay, so there's yesterday. Uh, we, could talk, we could talk for eight days about yesterday. But there's more to share with you and what we're trying to achieve in this time with you is to give you a bit of a background so that you can build on this and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing frequently asked questions series on each of these subjects that we're covering and so forth to give you more information but we want to start you off with at least some grounding in the process of what is going to be required if you want to change and become more loving individuals. Okay, is there any questions that you'd like to ask before I move on to our next thing? Thanks. I just wanted to find out, when we were um, incarnated, mm -hmm. we had a natural love. No. No. No, you had the potential to have natural love. A potential. Yeah. So we, when we were incarnated, we were... At at a certain level of love, is that...? Remember I've taught you in the... and this is where many of you have brought in your New Age doctrines and whatever and started to meld them with my teachings. I've never taught that you were naturally loving. What I've said is that you have natural love that you can develop. Yes. I've said at the beginning of your incarnation you are a blank soul yeah. with personality. Mm. That's what you are. We'll talk more about that today. Okay, thanks. Because that's about understanding yourself, right? So this is very key things that we need to understand about ourselves. And that's one of them. That we, we, we don't have automatically this d desire to love, desire to not love. Well, prove it. Like, look at the world. Does it look like it's automatically got a desire to love? I don't think so. Yeah. It makes sense? Yes, it does. Um, even somebody that has caused horrific murders and whatever, yep. Yep. do they don't even necessarily have a, a spark of anything at all? No, when you say That's, a spark, we have, I, the, we yeah. have a potential yeah. to choose differently. To, so it's just the potential? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. The potential oh, to yep. choose differently. Yeah, I get that Most now. of us do not choose differently. Yeah. And for a lot of reasons. We'll talk, yeah. to, we'll talk so, tomorrow about a lot yeah, of the reasons. Yeah, so it's just the potential. Yeah. Mm. Yep. It's a wonderful potential. But, but see, most people never do it 
unless they've been through lots of personal pain first. And it's pretty sad, isn't it? Mary talked to you about that yesterday. Why is it that you need to have all this personal pain before you choose to do something loving? And why is it that that's the only time you choose to do something loving? It's a good question, isn't it? So it's a question we need to face. Natalie, thanks. AJ, um, I actually feel really sad when you say that none of us have been educated in love. Yeah, that's good. And um, I just wondered that if we take a choice to start educating ourselves in love, yep. does that then filter through in our life with our children? And of course. Like that? Of course it will. But it has to be a real soul education. Yeah. It can't be willpower. Because no. willpower is just a facade and it's not love. So you can try to do the willpower way, which many of you have tried. Nobody around you is ever going to think you're more loving after you've done that. In fact, a lot of them are going to think you're more abusive, and many of you have become more abusive since you've heard divine truth than you were before. And you know why that is? Because you've tried to use your willpower to, go, to engage the principles rather than making a soul-based change. Yep. And that is, that's going to be more abusive to everyone around you. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. So how are we going so far? Okay, so you're starting to understand what's going to be required. Okay, so we, we start to understand. Now, what we're going to do is just have a couple... Uh, we might get one or two chaps in now, uh, we, which we'll set up in a few minutes. So those of you who want to take a break, you can take a short break now. And it'll take us about five minutes to set up. And if you can come back and we can get started on that, that'd be good. <laughs>